Let's go over four hard triangle questions you will see on your next SAT. This is going to be a part two on the triangles lecture series. If you haven't seen part one, make sure you go and watch those because this video is not going to make sense unless you have the right concepts in place. So before we get started today, every question we're going to go over here is going to be nicely organized into a PDF, which you can download in the pinned comment down below and print them out and try them out yourself before you watch the video. This is one of many practice sets inside the SAT Math Solidifier, which is going to be the collection of the hardest questions you'll see on the SAT, plus all the insights and shortcuts you need to know. And because this is going to be an advanced solution video, we're not going to go over every single step of the way. Instead, I'm going to give you the insights you need to have for all of these questions. So let's go over the first one. The question says, in the figure shown above is formed from four congruent equilateral triangles. Given the figure has an area of 16 root 3 and the outer perimeter of A, what's the value of A? So we're working with four equilateral triangles right here and it has a total area of 16 root 3. And because there are four triangles over here, we can find the individual ones by dividing by four, which is four root 3. That's the area of a single triangle. And for us to find the outer perimeter of this shape right there, we technically just need to know what one of these side lengths are because they are all equal lateral triangles. So if we know one side, we can apply to everything and find out what the total outer perimeter is going to be. And for us to find the side length, we can just work backwards from the area of the triangle formula and find out what this is. But how are we supposed to do that when we know nothing about this triangle other than the fact that it's just a equilateral triangle? Well, the thing about the SAT is that whenever you see a radical two or radical three, like you see over here, whenever you see a radical three in a triangle, that is a automatic sign that you're working with a special right triangle. Triangle. Not all the time, but like 99.8% of the times, you are working with special right triangles. If you don't know where to start, start with special right triangles. And we know that we're going to be having a equilateral triangle, which is going to be 60 for all three angles. And we know that if we split this equilateral into half, what's going to happen is it's going to divide this angle by two, and we're going to get 30 here, and we're going to get a right angle right there. And now we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, which has a side length ratio of x, x root 3, and then 2x. And because the triangle was cut in half, it's going to be x right there. So we know that this equilateral triangle has an area of 4 root 3 according to the question. And how do we find the area? Well, area of a triangle is going to be just 1 half base times height. So 1 half what's the base is going to be 2x. 2x times the height, which is going to be x root 3. And if we simplify the math, 2 crosses out and we're going to get our area as just x squared root 3. And based on the question, we also know that area of a single triangle is going to be 4 root 3. So same thing for root three. So root three is cancel out, our x is equal to two. So if it's two over here, that means it's also two over there. That means a single side length is gonna have a length of four. And how many side lengths do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So six times four, 24 is going to be the outer perimeter of the shape. So the main takeaway from this question is that whenever you see radical two or radical three from a triangle question, there's a very high chance that it's going to be testing you on special right triangles. Because there's only like three places where you're gonna see radicals on the SAT. It's gonna be exponents, quadratics, and special right triangles. If you see a triangle question with a radical two or three, jackpot is probably testing you on special right triangles. Let's move on to the next one. The question says, in the figure above, ABD and ABC intersect at the point E right there. Given that AD is equal to BC, so AD is equal to BC and AE is equal to BE. So these two are going to be the same. What's the measure of the angle ABE in terms of degrees? Well, if we're working with a triangle that has two of the side length, what do we call that? We call that the isosceles triangle. And by definition, we know that these two opposite angles are going to be the same measure. So looking at the 78 right there, it's going to be 102 right there. And these two are going to be 78 divided by twos each, which is going to be 39. So that means our angle A, B, E is going to be just 39 degrees. Does that make sense? So the main takeaway from this question is that there is a direct relationship between angle and the opposite side. It was pretty easy. You can easily fly with knowing what isosceles triangles is, but let's move on to a little bit more difficult version of this question. It will be testing you on the same concept, but a little bit more difficult. So the question says triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle where AB is equal to BC, right? AB is equal to BC. So given that D is on line AB and the angle ACB is bisected by imaginary line DC, which of the following must be true, right? So we have imaginary line or point D right there, and it's going to separate angle ACB into two equal pieces, uh, bisect it. So based on this information, we need to find out the relationship between these three side lengths. Which one's the longest, which one's the shortest? And this is one of those questions you either you know it or you don't, and it all comes down to having the right concepts in place. So pay attention for the next 30 seconds. So we're working with an isosceles triangle, right? So we know that it's going to be a 68 degrees right there, but it's going to be split into two, so it's going to be 34 here and also 34 
4 right there. And how do we find this missing third angle? Well, because it's a triangle, 180 minus 68 and minus another 68, we're going to get 180 minus 136, which is going to be just 40. So we know this angle over here is just going to be 44 degrees. And these two make up 77 degrees in a triangle. So that's going to be about 103 degrees. And because we have all the angles now set in place, we just need to look at the corresponding side lengths from each angle and find out the relationship. What I mean by that is you see this BC right there, that's opposite from the biggest angle, right? So as a result, we know that BC is going to be the longest length based on the direct relationship rule. Up next is going to be this second biggest angle of 44 degrees right there, which is opposite opposite of the length DC. So we know DC is going to be the next longest length. And lastly, 34 is going to be the smallest, which means our BD is going to be the shortest length. So what's our answer going to be? Our answer is going to be choice B. So one of the key concepts you have to know for the triangles is going to be the direct relationship rule. The bigger the angle, the longer the opposite corresponding side length. All right, let's move on to the last question. The question says, the figure above represents a circle with a radius of two and a center of A. So it's gonna have a radius of two and a center of A, always mark what the question is telling you. If the line BC is equal to two and it's tangent to the circle at point B, what's the length of AC, right? So before I even go into the question, I'm gonna look at the answer choices and recognize that, oh, the question has radical two and radical three inside the question. So chances are it's going to be testing you something related to the special right triangle. Sometimes it might not, but I'm just gonna keep that in the back of my head just in case. So what we have here is that, okay, it's gonna be two right there, it's gonna be two right there, and it's going to be tangent at point B. And based on the circle characteristics we have learned from the circle lecture, which I'll link in the pinned comment down below, a line tangent to the circle is going to form a what? It's going to form a right angle with the radius every single time. So now what we have is going to be a right triangle with a side length of two and two and a hypotenuse right there. And from here, we could also use Pythagorean theorem, but we also know that whenever a right triangle has same length and same length, it's going to be a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which is going to be X, X, and X root two over here, which means the hypotenuse will be two root two right there. So our answer is going to be choice B. And some of you guys might think, John, I don't need to recognize these special right triangles, I can just use Pythagorean theorem. I 100% agree with you on that. But the thing is, I just used small, easy numbers for demonstration purposes. SAT could easily put massive numbers like 12 root three, in here. And yes, you could use Pythagorean theorem, but simply knowing this relationship could get you to 12 root six in matter of seconds, instead of doing all these big disgusting numbers. And if you still don't want to use it, I mean, it's, it's your SAT score. You don't have to learn it. Not really. No, just, just learn it. And again, the main takeaway from this question is recognizing the radical two and threes as the triggers for special right triangles and using them accordingly. And if any of these questions didn't make sense, make sure you watch the part one to get the right concepts in place, or you can leave a comment down below. And if you'd like to get more practices in, check out SAT Math Solidifier for more practices, more insights, and more shortcuts.